so sad is those good and honest people who wish to realize the Atman, who wish to ensconce themselves in deathlessness, have to introvert their organs and merge them in the subtler entity. Instead of allowing the organs to be extroversive, they have to be made introversive, seeing the method of operation of the organs. The Rishi Sage said, it seems that the Creator is not particularly pleased with the organs, but actually he desires their destruction. Merging the organs completely <coughs> in the mind does not, however, mean their annihilation, nor does it mean the destruction of the vittis or propensities. The underlying significance of this is to bring about a purposive change in the application, a change in outlook. What will be the result if the movement is towards the crude? Material-minded people may say that the movement towards the crude is the characteristic movement of the mind, but such a statement runs counter to the principle of movement. An object whose movement appears to be natural also has reverse movement, which is equally natural. Actually speaking, Motion is the result of internal impulse or external attraction, or both simultaneously. An object in the air comes hurtling down to the earth, and people think that this is its natural movement. But is this true? Actually, it is because of the earth's gravitational pull that its movement is earthward. If it goes beyond the Earth's gravitational pull, then falling to the Earth will not be its natural movement. Similarly, an organ's movement towards an external object may be natural to some, but there exist in them both the psychic inspiration for environment as well as the attraction of the object. What if the psychic inspiration does not indulge in yearning for the object, or if its views, or if it views it with detachment, then the motion will be reversed, in spite of the object's attraction. Of course, in the initial efforts, people have to struggle a little against the crude attraction of objects, at least until they are transformed by the force of their idea. But eventually, this reversal of movement becomes natural. Crude senses' desires cannot identify themselves with internal subtlety as easily and quickly as they can with crude external objects. Then too, the samskaras also to some extent stand in the way. Nevertheless, in spite of all these impediments, sarma, one's concentrated effort, Finally wins the day, for practice and per perseverance conquer all obstacles. For example, a man with a strong addiction to wine must first force his mind against it in order to leave the habit. That is to say, he has to propel his psychic urge in a different direction, and free his senses' desires from the attraction of his mental wine. But if, in spite of his strenuous efforts, he comes in contact with the real wine, then in most cases the attraction of the wine will overcome him, due to the importance of his internal inspiration that is why in the initial state of forceful efforts have to be made to change the previous outlook towards external objects, but thereafter things gradually become natural and normal. Also, Steve can also say that stealing is their natural occupation. Their minds are naturally attracted towards theft, and that is why they steal. The statement of the materialist that the movement of the organs is always towards the external object is the same type. Some may say that introverting the tendencies of the organs 
They cost them their lives, and so they their lives, and so it should not be done. These two is meaningless, for in reality, during the enjoyment of objects, the organs attain inertness, and yet we do not call it the death of the organs. Similarly, if the movement of the organs tends towards absolute consciousness, they will indeed attain consciousness. We cannot call this their death, rather it will cause their entitative purity to gradually reveal itself. Thus to call organs outward movements natural and their inward movement unnatural is absolutely meaningless. However, for the proper preservation of the crude mundane existence, it is absolutely necessary to maintain equipoise between the external and the internal. Only running after the crew destroys that equipoise, but neither should one neglect one's duties in the material world by becoming totally absorbed in the sudden of consciousness, denying the so-called crude. It is only by recognizing the bearing of consciousness himself in each object and accepting it as a special type of conscious entity that one can properly equate matter and spirit as well as the external and internal.